Hello and welcome to DevOps GAN by School of DevOps. My name is Gaurav Shah and today I'm going to talk about top five limitations of Ansible. In another video, I talked about why I love Ansible and what are the top five reasons I love it in comparison with, let's say, Chef and Puppet. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about what are the top five limitations. I mean, even despite this limitation, I still love Ansible a lot. And I have been using extensively for the last four years for most of my configuration and uh, automation, infrastructure automation, wherever possible, right? Now, there are some cases where it's not possible to use Ansible, and those are the corner cases that I'm really talking about. Uh, the first limitation of Ansible that I find as a limitation is uh, the scale. Um, and no, we're not talking about like 100 machines or 200 machines. We're talking about installations with more than like, let's say, 1,000 or 2,000 nodes. Now, the reason why that's a limitation is because of the way Ansible really works, because it's a push model and it is, uh, it's, it's not a pull model unlike Puppet and Chef, which scales really well since it is pushing from one server, one Ansible node. Uh, it slows down because it has to open those many forks, like multiple forks um, at the same time. And uh, if you have like thousands of nodes, that's definitely going to be a problem because you'll be bound on the limited, limited bandwidth that one machine has. Uh, you still have, you know, Ansible has improved over time and um, in, instead of mul making multiple SSH connections, it just uses one SSH connection and transfers it. So that, there are optimizations which have been done, uh, but still it, uh, we have seen some problems with some of our clients with when it comes to scale. Uh, now, having said that, the, when I went to Singapore recently and uh, I was presenting at Red Hat, uh, the Red Hat team really mentioned that uh, they're working on solving it. They actually have some solution for it in the enterprise version of Red Hat that is Ansible Tower. So you may really want to check that before, you know, um, before coming to a conclusion when you talk about scale. That's just uh, uh, what I was sharing. Uh, my experience is mainly with the open source version of Ansible. That's what I primarily use. So you may want to check with Red Hat's Ansible Tower and maybe want to talk to them if you're considering installations um, with like more than a few thousand nodes really, right? Um, the second approach and it's sort of related, second limitation is related to this is uh, the push model, uh, one is does not scale always and sometimes it's, um, it's better to have a pull model. It's a little less flexible because when you're pushing from the controller to the nodes, your nodes should be reachable from the controller. Uh, you can't have a server on the cloud and let's say the nodes in your private network and the server, unless you have a VPN connectivity or some connectivity in, uh, server will not be able to configure it, right? Or if you have like infrastructure in multiple regions, geographical regions, and if your server is in one place and it is not available and accessible, um, rather the server, if, can, if it cannot access that infrastructure, it cannot configure it because it needs a direct line of sight from the controller to the nodes. Whereas a pull model really is more flexible because if you are a pull model, you're running an agent on each of those nodes, it can be behind a private network and you can have your servers sitting on the cloud as well and the pull model, it will initiate that, it will uh, client side, there is nothing to be open. As long as the server is available and accessible, it can connect to the server and pull. So pull is definitely more flexible if you compare it with uh, the push model. Again, uh, you might want to check if Red Hat has a solution uh, in Ansible Tower uh, where it actually allows you to have a distributed, um, uh, you know, Ansible controllers and push from there, something like that, right? Uh, that might be an ideal uh, thing to have and that might be the way to solve this problem, really. That's the second problem I have with Ansible. Uh, the third issue that I see is not really an issue because uh, it, it's, I mean, um, Ansible is such an amazing uh, tool and it comes with uh, like all these batteries included, like there are close to 1600 modules which are available, 1600 entities that you can manage. Uh, but at times, you know, when you do such amazing thing, your expectations also go up, right? So sometimes I want Ansible to manage everything that I need. Uh, that's not the case always because, for example, uh, recently we wanted to um, provision an infrastructure on multiple clouds, AWS, uh, GC, and Azure, and we wanted to set up um, the managed versions of uh, the Hadoop clusters, EMR, HT Insight, and Dataproc. Now, we couldn't find every single module that we needed. We can still write a command line tool, write a shell script, and create our modules, uh, but you may not find all the modules 
for let's say these kind of things. Uh, obviously, Ansible is not a uh, primary uh, or specialized cloud provisioner, so it's understandable. Uh, but I'm just talking about it from my um, you know, opinion point of view because I would definitely love to use one tool that is Ansible for everything, including configurations and provisioning and uh, so on and so forth. So my expectations from Ansible are probably why I have that um, issue. Really, it's not probably non-issue for most of uh, most of the use cases, right? Uh, the fourth issue that I have is uh, with Ansible that I see in comparison with Puppet and Chef is lack of certified roles. In general, the amount of roles and uh, the kind of maturity that the roles have, um, I find there's some limitations because if you look at, let's say, Puppet uh, Forge, which is a repository for all these user contributed modules versus Ansible Galaxy, which is a similar thing, which is um, a repository of user contributed roles. I definitely see lack of availability of roles in Ansible module, Ansible uh, Galaxy, that is one. Second is Puppet has a nicer way of certifying the roles. Even if they are community roles, they'll certify it. They'll, you know, there are some official roles by Puppet Labs itself. Uh, there are some certified roles or they acknowledge them that to be mature. Whereas Ansible has no such thing so far. I'm, I would much rather prefer, since it is now acquired by Red Hat, I would much rather prefer Red Hat, you know, um, working on creating some certified roles, which will be extremely, extremely useful for the users, really, because they can trust those roles from Red Hat, um, or you should have some way of certifying those roles, really, right? So, uh, so that I can trust that role. Okay, I have this role, uh, and it should be matured enough. It should be well tested, and so on and so forth, right? So that's something I still don't see um, on Ansible Galaxy. That's sort of my feature request to Red Hat, really, right? So that's the, my fourth fourth point, really. Here, the fifth point or the fifth limitation, or sort of, um, I feel uh, is basically the entry barrier for and. Ansible Tower is because Ansible Tower is really expensive. It's like ten thousand dollars. That's the minimum that you start with, up for up to hundred nodes, right? Now it might still make sense if I have hundred nodes or a little more uh, closer to that. But let's assume I work with let, let's say a lot of small and uh, medium organizations where you have like twenty servers, thirty servers, forty servers, right? Uh, it's not going to make an economical sense to buy an Ansible tower for that kind of infrastructure. It gets really expensive uh, that way, right? Uh, versus if I compare this with Puppet or Chef, generally they have a model where you have five dollars per node per month, so which comes to around sixty dollars a year or fifty dollars a year, and uh, that model can suit well if you really want to go with Ansible tower, and if you have less number of nodes, that model definitely can suit better. So my, again, another feature request to Red Hat is probably come up with some some model which can work with the SMEs as well. Uh, that way you might have a wider installation base of Ansible Tower. Otherwise, I generally have to recommend uh, to the small organizations to just go with something like Rundeck and Ansible, or there's another tool uh, that is Ansible Run Analysis, which mostly like, um, you know, uh, it gives you the information about the runs, not allows you to control much. Uh, so we either use Rundeck or ARA, which is Ansible Run Analysis, instead of Ansible Tower. I would much rather like to see that Ansible Tower coming to uh, the smaller organizations, and th that is sort of my feature request, and that those are the five things or five limitations that I see um, if I compare Ansible with tools such as Puppet or Chef. Now with that, I'm going to conclude this video. Uh, so if you like this content, do subscribe uh, to this channel, do give us a thumbs up or thumbs down based on how you, what you liked. Um, that will be a great encouragement for us if you subscribe to this channel and if you uh, tell us what kind of um, videos that you would like, tell us what kind of content that you would want to watch, uh, tell us what topics that you want to um, listen um, to us from. Um, tell us what kind of topics that you would want us to talk about, right? Uh, with that, thank you and I'll see you in the next video. If you like this content, do like, share and subscribe. You may also find links to our free courses in the description below along with some special offers for our premium courses. You could also visit us at schoolofdevops.com.